let's start. The project name is Async Task. Let's see the project structure. In the manifest file, we have written the internet permission. And we have used the HTTP legacy library. Here we have the main activity, a get async task class, a post async task class, and an async callback interface. And in the UI, we have an activity underscore main.xml file, which is the layout of the main activity. Let's see the UI. In the activity underscore main.xml file, we have two buttons, get request and post request. We have a text view that displays the result. And we have a progress bar that is initially hidden and gets visible when the user presses a button. Let's see the code. The scroll view is the root layout. This is the constraint layout. This is the get request button. This is the post request button. This is the text view that displays the result. And this is the progress bar. The visibility is set to gone, so the progress bar would be hidden initially. Let's see the Java code now. These are the imports. This is the get async task class that extends the async task class, which has three arguments. The first argument is the input, the second argument is the progress, and the third argument is the result. These are the data members. In the set instance function, we set the data members. In the on pre execute function, we show the progress bar. The do in background function works on a background thread, so we will perform the API calling task in this function. Here we specify the URL from which we will call an API. Here we execute the API call. Here we receive the response. If the status code is 200, that means the result is OK, otherwise, the response has some error. When we get the response, we stop the progress bar. Since the API call was working in the background thread, and the progress bar was working on the main UI thread, to stop the progress bar we need to access the UI thread, so we have used the run on UI thread function. And finally, we return the result, which gets thrown in the on post execute function. In the onPostExecute function, we receive the result from the doInBackground function, and then we pass this result to the async callback interface, which sends this result to the main activity because the main activity has implemented this async callback interface, which we will see in some time. These are the imports. This is the post async task class that extends the async task class, which has three arguments. The first argument is the input, the second argument is the progress, and the third argument is the result. These are the data members. In the set instance function, we set the data members. In the on pre execute function, we show the progress bar. The do in background function works on a background thread, so we will perform the API calling task in this function. Here we specify the URL from which we will call an API. As you can see, the do in background function has one parameter called strings. This is the data that has been sent from the main activity. This data will be posted to the API. So here we fetch that data. Here we execute the API call and receive the response. When we get the response, we stop the progress bar. Since the API call was working in the background thread and the progress bar was working on the main UI thread, to stop the progress bar we need to access the UI thread, so we have used the run on UI thread function. And finally, we return the result, which gets thrown in the onPostExecute function. In the onPostExecute function, we receive the result from the doInBackground function, and then we pass this result to the async callback interface, which sends this result to the main activity because the main activity has implemented this async callback interface, which we will see in some time. This is the async callback interface. This interface has a function called setResult. This function receives the API result from async task classes and sends them to the main activity. These are the imports. This is the main activity. The activity implements the async callback interface that has a function called setResult. Here we set the API result into the text view. These are the data members. 
When the get request button is clicked, we create an object of get async task class, call the set instance function, and then call the execute method. This line calls the get API. And its result is shown via the set result function. When the post request button is clicked, we have some string data that we want to post to API. We create an object of post async task class, call the set instance function, and then call the execute method where we pass that string data as an argument. This line calls the get API. And its result is shown via the set result function. Let's run the app. So that's it. That's how you can use the async task for background work including API calls in Java Android. Thanks for watching.